Hey, MVPs, Rico Knows here. Gonna talk to you guys about yesterday's results. Uh, it was a rough day, rough day. There's a lot of red on the lock list, but you know, you gotta live with your assessment and live with what happened and then you learn from the mistakes and you just keep pushing forward. Um, shout out to the MVPs. Obviously, this scrolling bar is no longer accurate, but let's talk about it. So first and foremost, locks themselves uh, clean sweep on Friday. That's how you get those first two greens and that green over there from Duke Northwestern. And then Saturday starts. Get it right. Texas at Michigan kind of told you guys, hey, bet on this. That's that's it. There, there's no other way around it. It's a, it's a huge lock for me. It's, it's just a no-brainer, if you will. And a lot of people aren't impressed with the pick, but when you get them right, you want to go big or go home. It's kind of like some of those futures bets where I'm like, hey, guys, this is the one you got to bet on. Now, we get Pittsburgh, Cincinnati. I tell you, take the over. Apparently, Cincinnati decided not to score in the second half. They looked great in the first half. Pittsburgh figured it out, but they were terrible in the first half. So when you bet overs, you got to hope that all teams are hitting on all cylinders, and that didn't necessarily happen, and you miss. Uh, it's unfortunate. At the same time, while I talk about that game, I'll, I'll tell you over here, Pittsburgh at Cincinnati, I had Cincinnati winning the game, and they blew it at the last minute. You know, when I do assessments on talent that has no real bearing on coaching, coaching is not a part of the metric, has no bearing on injuries, weather, maybe matchups. It's really about how I eva evaluated each individual team, and we're just trying to see how it lines up. Now, the talent chart, three out of five is pretty good. Um, it's still above 68% when picking money line winners. Not a real big deal, but it's just something to think about when you're trying to make these assessments and, and figure teams out. Now, when you're trying to assess the teams, some things you can't overcome is the inconsistency of how they perform. And if you look at Kentucky, South Carolina, I saw some MVPs on the Discord server writing things like, how did Rico miss this? How did Rico get this wrong? How dare he? And it's like, I have a lifetime track record of 60% against the spread. If you don't like it, you're in the wrong platform. If you need 100% accuracy, da, da 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 I saw guys writing quote-unquote locks, things like this. Dude, just get off the platform. Just leave me the fuck alone. I'm going to keep working. The analysis is here. If you know the team's better than me, it doesn't make a difference. I, I don't believe you. And this is what happens. Kentucky's defense was great, and they bend but don't break. They eventually broke. There's nothing you can do when your offense isn't moving on all cylinders. And South Carolina, after struggling with ODU, apparently came out and played very motivated. Predicting things like that or making those types of assessments would it isn't even accurate. It's just, if there's anybody out there telling you, oh, South Carolina's going to win this game, watch. Like, what reference do you have? Shout out to South Carolina. They got it done. It's the reality of the situation. Um, and, and it's a bad bad miss but it's one unit right so like when you miss on a game how bad should it be well that's on you that's why i don't dictate unit sizes next to anything because i don't i don't get down like that unless i start screaming vegas got it wrong vegas got it wrong you, you know I, I just don't live in that world charlotte north carolina bad beat north carolina had the spread covered they come back and it is what it is they they, they cover in the fourth shout out to charlotte the last second actually last minute uh, UMass Toledo, Toledo's on the no on the no bet list. It happens every year. They just suck ass when they don't need to, and when they need to, whatever it is. Louisville covered the spread against Jacksonville State. Some people said it was a bad beat. I need to know what you got them at. I I got it at, that morning at twenty seven and a half. So I'm not sure if I'm doing my math wrong or what. JMU terrible, looked terrible against Gardner Webb. Had to come back. Um, absolutely pathetic. Colorado State, they lied. They said they wouldn't by forty. I talked to the players. Talked to the team. They didn't win by 40. <laughs> they won by like 17 or something. Georgia State, Chattanooga. Georgia State found a way to win. Not by 10, though. And that's life. UAB, ULM. ULM coaching staff reached out to me three weeks ago, four weeks ago, and told me, Rico, we're going to be really good. We're going to surprise a lot of people. We're going to be sneaky good. Yeah, that freshman, that team, they're figuring it out. And Coach V, the head coach for ULM, you know, he used to be the interim coach at UAB two years ago. So knowing the team intimately, he finds a way to win. And that's crazy. Trent Dilfer needs to be fired. He didn't just find a way to win. They won. They blew him out. And I did not see that coming. Got to respect ULM at that point. Over Georgia Southern Nevada, they were scoring early, first quarter. And then they just fell apart and stopped scoring. That's life. Houston, Oklahoma. Shout out to Oklahoma. <laughs> 
You know, I remember I told you guys this when I said the assessment. I was like, oh, there's no way I can go with Oklahoma to cover the spread because they needed five turnovers from Temple. And that's what they got, and that's how they were covered. That's how they covered it. And then you get them against Houston, and I go and look at Houston's tape against UNLV, and I'm like, yeah, they, they give up a lot. They, they turn over the ball. No, you don't turn it over. That's what it looks like. Close game, absolute nonsense, and you miss. UTEP, <laughs> UTEP, UTEP, UTEP. Losing in overtime, that's embarrassing. Um, they had the lead at points. They were going to win that game. Fell apart. I can see the Discord MVPs are just going ham. UTEP selling, UTEP selling. My goodness, uh, that's the last of UTEP. And that's when we say, you know how I always say, like, we're going to learn about these teams. That's, that's unfortunate. We learn face first. It's life. Arizona, not scoring on Northern Arizona is wild. Absolutely wild. Not covering the spread. There was no no significance of positivity when it comes to Arizona. And if I can say one thing, it's I, it looks like Arizona State against the spread is going to be more reliable than Arizona. Fresno State knew they were the class of the field. They're a really good team. Go ahead and cover the spread against Sacramento State. So, Locks got absolutely rocked this week. Didn't look good. You're looking at one, two, three, four, five. By the way, these two were considered locks. I talked to the MVPs on the live stream about it. You can go to YouTube and watch the live stream if you don't believe me. It's there. From now on, we're going to make the Rico Knows Money Line underdogs. Some of them will be locks or they will be spreads or leans. I'm sorry. Um, based upon my confidence level on the underdogs and whether or not they're going to win. Fair? And that's because we're going to count because I'm getting them right against the spread and we're not counting them against the spread. So we have to, um, just to be accurate. That being said, we missed on one of the locks over here, Texas tech against Washington state. I thought it was a lock that Texas tech would win. They didn't. If you see green text, that means we missed a lock. Just so you know, if you didn't know, see the green text. And if you see white text, that means we hit a lock. That's what that means. Anyways, if you didn't know the whole charts color coded. So locks, we hit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven locks on the week. And we missed the whopping one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 locks, seven and 13. That's red. It's not good. It's not good. Puts us down to 52% on the season, 22 and 20 so far in 2024. By the way, typically around 60%. That's where we're at, 60% over here by the end of the season. So hang in there. Some weeks are good, some weeks aren't. Pace yourself. That's why unit management is essential. Now, spreads. They're on the chart. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Went out there and rocked the spreads all day. If you count the two money lines, which I'm so proud of, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and we missed a total of four. So ten and four on spreads. What a great week to bet the spreads. I'm sorry, on leans. What a great week to bet the leans. Just felt really good, dominating, and... Um, this is why some MVPs are better than others, right? It's all on the chart. You find the spots where you want to win money. You find the spots that work for you. It's a menu. Eat accordingly. And that's pretty damn good. So, Troy, not hitting on the over sucks. They did cover the spread. It was on the spread initially in the early chart, so moving over to the over hurt me, but it happens, right? That just sucks. Duquesne and Boston College. I knew Duquesne was really bad after watching their first, their first game of the season. And then watching Boston College be as dominant as they were with Florida State. We knew this was going to happen. They came out there and won 49-0 or something like that. Impressive. Michigan State, Maryland. We hit the over early. That was pretty good. I just knew those teams can score. Shout out to Michigan State for pulling it out. Pretty good stuff. Northern Illinois, Notre Dame. Northern Illinois wins the game. I felt really good about Northern Illinois' defense. They actually showed out and played much better than people anticipated. Um, it, when I'm sitting there, like, if you go back and watch the, the video... MVP video, right? My assessment on the teams and the games. You will hear me say so many things that end up being right throughout the day, but they can't all make the chart. They can't. And it's just, it wouldn't be feasible. And I, I don't want to pick every single game. But as I'm going through every single game, if you hear me say something like, oh, we can't believe in this team for whatever reason, that means I indirectly like the underdog or the other team. And that's how you got to kind of infer it and put it together. And some MVPs have figured that out over the years. Like they're just watching them be like, oh, Rico said this. Oh, I'm going to go with this. And that's what matters right there is like MVPs who are successful do their own research. They have their own data. 
They, they, they did their own research because they care about their money. And when you do your own research, you feel some type of way about a certain game, and then you hear me say it. And you go, you know what? He just said that. Oh, I, I, he agrees with what I'm saying. Boom, I'm going to go make that bet. But when you do zero research, zero research, you'll find yourself tailing these locks and then just screaming at me, going, how did Rico miss? How did Rico miss? It's like, how did you miss? Why did you click bet on that game? Right? I don't, I don't bet for you. And that's the mindset, right? So the MVPs who sat in here and believed in Northern Illinois, congratulations. By the way, I get a ton of screenshots. I get a ton of DMs every time we get something right. And then I get the complaints on the Discord server when we get it wrong. That's life. Uh, Kansas, Illinois. Kansas blows it. Illinois finds a way to win. Congratulations to the MVPs that believed in Illinois. Texas Tech didn't even look remotely competitive with Washington State. I was in bed watching the game, and I'm just laying there just watching. Just uh. Shout out to Washington State. By the way, the freshmen, remember I talked about them on the live stream? You got to come to the live stream, guys. I talked about Washington State's freshmen. Uh, got to remember his damn name. He's so fast. I talked about him on Friday. Go back and watch the live stream. You'll learn. Washington State's got a player, man. I fucking forgot his name because he's new. Uh, Buffalo, Missouri. Missouri comes through. They win, but they did not get the team total over. That hurts like hell. William and Mary, Coastal Carolina. Like I said, they'd cover the spread against some scrubs. Alabama, South Florida. They would cover the spread. And Washington, or I'm sorry, Western Michigan did not have a chance. Didn't, didn't even look competitive against Ohio State. Newsflash. Uh, Liberty rock shocked the world and came back to win. <laughs> they were losing their ass to New Mexico State. This is embarrassing. New Mexico State's not a good team, but Liberty's also not a good team. I've been over that. Uh, Washington State. I'm sorry. Utah State and USC told you the under all day because that's too many points. And I figured USC would win, but there's no way Utah State's scoring against that defense. Not after what I saw against LSU. Not the way they played against LSU. They, that defense looks really good. And that means USC's sneaky good this year. So, that being said, it would have it would have been nice if I picked all these games and put them over here. It would have, it, but it didn't happen. So, it improves our leans this year. They're now at 64%, uh, 20 and 11 on leans. Pretty pretty sweet. Ended up the week 17 and 17 on the week for my picks. It is what it is. Oh, by the way, I don't want to gloss over this because these are really big deals to me. The fact that I'm getting 10 out of 4 so far this season, 71% correct when picking a money line underdog to win the game is mind boggling. This is astronomically crazy and I'm so pumped about it. So just be aware when I'm picking a money line to win a game, you got to look guys. These are, if you just bet these straight across yesterday and nothing else, you'd be way up. But obviously you should have bet the Texas Michigan game. But if you bet Texas Michigan and only these, you'd be way up. And I know MVPs that are way up. Now, some of these spreads missed. Some of these spreads missed, and that's why we have a prop chart for the alternate spread, and I know MVPs are using them. They, they reached out to me and told me. So let me pull that up, the props and leans chart. We got a lot more green this week. We did a lot better. Obviously, we started off really red. This is Friday. We, we started off pretty red on Friday, got our butts kicked on the, the, lean, or on the uh, parlays and props. But for Saturday, I was pretty dialed in for Saturday I was pretty dialed in and you can see here there are certain games we hit like Toledo UMass we hit on the alternate spread and we got positive money on it so when I tell you guys hey this is on the chart and you're blind tailing the chart and you don't watch the video and you don't come back and find the alternate spreads that hit on those games that we missed so while you see misses on the chart you'll find out MVPs went out here and hit on other spreads that have to do with those games. Here's games that are not on the chart, but they're over here. So there's there's alternate spreads for the entire game. Kansas State, Tulane, right? Georgia Tech, Syracuse. So how many games did we get right? Well, if you come over here and you start counting, there's games in here. Ohio State, Western Michigan. There's, there's things that we got right, and there's the Iowa State, Iowa spread. Northern Illinois, Notre Dame. Was it Nord yeah, Northern Illinois, Notre Dame, Bowling Green, Penn State, Troy, Memphis. There's bets in here that are alternate spreads and not prop bets, not college, and you've got to pay attention. Louisiana, Kennesaw State, Baylor, Utah. You know, it's, it's one of those things where I wish people cared enough to watch the videos. Pretty good weekend for that. We, we really handled it on Saturday because we were really red going into Saturday, like really red.
So ending up at four, almost 42% on prop picks. That just goes to show you how inaccurate prop picks are. And you got to pick and choose wisely. And the fact that there are people out there parlaying these together, that tells you why they don't ever hit. They just don't. They just don't. It is what it is. Nonetheless, we're currently at 46% on the locks column. 46, almost 50%. We're getting there. We'll get above 50% by the end of the season. And then 45% on, this, on the leans column. Weekday games will really help with this because we'll either knock them out the park or miss completely. And, and we'll keep building on that. It takes time. But currently 99 and 156 on the season. 38% on these little guys. It's tough. Still learning about teams, still learning about players and coaches' tendencies, trying to predict that. That's just crazy, right? They'll take a gay guy out. They'll take a guy in, whatever it is. So um, going over the results of every single game is not on the agenda for this episode. This is just MVP results, if you will. I go over the results of every single game during the podcast, uh, during the week. But if there's anything I can tell you guys when we look at this and we, and we discuss it, Georgia didn't cover the spread. Obviously, Texas did. Ole Miss covered the spread. Oregon looked absolutely terrible again against Bo Bo Boise State. Maybe Boise State's great. Still trying to figure that out. But Gentry puts up 192 against Oregon. That's crazy. Penn State, pff, I try to tell you guys, I really like Bowling Green this year in the MAC. I did not see them covering that spread or doing this great. But congratulations. Not surprised. Not, I mean, I am surprised. But <sighs> shout out to Bowling Green. Baylor, obviously Utah's got a problem and it's an injury at quarterback. Cam got injured, so it is what it is. Miami goes out there, covers the spread. Tennessee. <coughs> Tennessee, 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 Tennessee. Y'all don't know the rest of the development. I'll just stop. But Tennessee going out there, winning by 41 points. Amazing. Congratulations. Shout out to them. Um, yeah, stop doubting them. They look amazing. Houston's embarrassing. Congratulations to Oklahoma State. I told you they'd win. They found a way to win. They got it done. K-State, apparently Tulane got robbed, but they win. LSU's embarrassing themselves. That's crazy. That's a crazy That's a crazy score for LSU versus Nichols. It really is. Competitive score. That's nuts. Embarrassing yourselves, Arizona, against NAU. Just did not get it done. No Fafita out here throwing interceptions. Just look bad. Iowa State, congrats, Rico. I've been on Iowa State all offseason. Been telling you they're better than Iowa for two months. Hope you bet the hope you bet the money line. And that's what it matters, right? So like if you're a new MVP and you have no clue and you don't watch the podcast, you don't care, man. You don't care about your money. Rico, it wasn't on the locks chart. It wasn't on the locks column. You idiots, man. I've been screaming out Iowa State's gonna win this game. Money line. That's better than the locks column. That's that's real. Louisville covering the spread against Jacksonville State. Absolute scrubs. Told you they, they just aren't competitive. Syracuse, they could throw all day, and Georgia Tech can run all day. We get the over. This was on the chart, uh, the early chart, I believe, and then I took it off for Saturday. What a damn shame. App State did not cover that spread. <laughs> I thought they would. Did not cover that spread. Shout out to Clemson. Just elite, right? Minnesota beat the hell out of Rhode Island. Congratulations. Rutgers, you guys got to remind me to talk about this game. It's never on my sports book when I do the videos because it doesn't populate because I'm located in Jersey, according to my sports book. Uh, Pittsburgh found a way to win. Congratulations. UConn absolutely dominated. Memphis, Troy. Memphis is good, man. Army, they impressed me. And Florida Atlantic looks hapless, just so you know. AM, get back on the winning track. I was right about Missouri State. Thank God I didn't put it on the chart. It would have been another miss. But man, Missouri State had that game. What a shame. Ball State ain't shit. Speaking of ain't shit, there's Kent State. UNLV going ham. Cal, I told you, I can't put Auburn on the board. Don't bet on Auburn. Cal can score against anybody, and now they're undefeated 2-0. South Carolina absolutely flipped my world. Washington gets it done against EMU. Not a big deal. I told you, and this is what I'm talking about right here. When I did the video, when I did the live stream with MVPs, I was like, oh, I don't, I can't trust Wisconsin to cover that spread. That's 21 points. I can't trust them. They haven't shown up like that. That is me telling you, 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 could, go take, you could go take South Dakota. It's not on the chart, but I believe South Dakota is going to cover this spread. That is what that means. When I'm like, oh, I don't believe in this team to cover the spread. That, the, what is the inverse of that? The other team's going to cover the spread. Oh, it's tough. It's tough. There's Boston College. Congratulations to them dominating Duquesne. New North Carolina, bad beat. Idaho, I just knew Wyoming wasn't any good. And if I tell you, I don't know if Wyoming's any good and their coaching's terrible and they don't look ready for the season. I saw Idaho do this. I'm like, oh, 
That means I don't like the favorite. That's how that works. Navy, much better than Temple. Texas State, I took a money line. They impressed me a lot. UTSA, not ready for that. Not ready for that smoke. West Virginia gets on the winning track. Congrats. I was scared of this this spread, but they got it done. Oh, my God. I love FIU's defense. I love FIU's defense. Not sure how they're going to score. Well, they're sure how they're going to score. Five interceptions on this terrible-ass Labis. Five interceptions. FIU's defense is for real, guys. And I love it. I, I constantly say it over and over and over. JMU is embarrassing. Oh, my God. ECU, told you they'd win money line. I just thought it was a coin flip game, and I liked ECU. By the way, Jake Garcia, four interceptions. Absolute scrub. Ohio, that was a coin flip game, and I got it wrong. Um, Ohio's a better coach team. And South Alabama came out with this Davenport quarterback who I'd never seen before. Uh, not the guy I thought was going to start. There was no injury report. There was no one, us, no one telling us any, otherwise. Florida goes out there and wins. Coastal Carolina got the spread. I told you there's no way they're only getting 17 points against an FCS team. They got it done. Coastal Carolina, sneaky explosive, y'all. Western Kentucky, welcome to winning. FU, Georgia State. Stanford, found a way to win. Cal Poly, sucks. Stanford out there putting up 41 points. Second half, all needed, by the way. Virginia, money line. Money line. Virginia's better than Wake Forest. I'll take it every time. Don't give a shit. Don't want to hear about the details. 14 points in the fourth quarter. We will take it. I love Louisiana's defense. They came out to play. I'm impressed. Remember that. Louisiana's defense is good, just like FIU's, just like South Florida's. Took San Jose State money line. Another great pick. We did it. Missed on here. Just overestimated Colorado State's ability to score and play defense. George Southern finds a way to win. Poor Nevada, man. Probably one of the better one and two teams out there. I just can't find it. I knew I knew this game would be a shootout, but it wasn't a big enough shootout, so we didn't put it on the chart. But, hey, man, Tulsa had the lead and blew it. Congratulations, Arkansas State. ULM. Oh, Oh, that guy, Ahmad Hardy, freshman, true freshman, touchdown. But it's really about this guy, Curry. I told you, I think Curry was going to be the leading rusher. I talked about this on the podcast. I think Curry was going to be the leading rusher. And there he is, leading rusher. That was, but it's week two. Southern Miss, I'm not impressed. Rice, a few assholes. This is how Rice is supposed to look. I would have bet on them all day, believed in them, and except for that egg they laid in week one. But this is how dominant Rice is supposed to be. Bastards. UCF impressed me. Vanderbilt covered the spread. I didn't know what the spread was, but they impressed me. Obviously, Colorado's trash. Congratulations, Colorado. I mean, Nebraska. I told you I can't take North Texas. I, this is another one where I was like, oh, guys, I love North Texas, but the spread's like 24 points. I can't go there. Stephen F. Austin's a really good team, and I know North Texas has terrible defense. You can, That means take Stephen F. Austin. Not on the chart, but you got to read in between the lines. TCU getting it done. Really, really, really beast. FU UTEP, FU Texas Tech. By the way, the freshman. What's his damn name? I'm going to educate you guys right now. His name is Way Sean Parker, and he is fast as lightning. He's that fast, fast. He's that I'll race you to the other light pole fast. That boy is the real deal, holy field. Way Sean Parker. Remember that for over bets or uh, prop bets. Fresno State looks beast. Mikey King going absolute ham. Liberty finding a way to win 21 points in the fourth quarter. Not good. Not good. Absolute dog shit for spreads. Arizona State, impressive. Impressive, man. They were dominant the whole game, and then, then you know, Mississippi State starts putting stuff together, but it is what it is. And Oregon State, <sighs> San Diego State can't score. All right, guys, those were all the games. Hope you hit. Hope you win. I know some good – listen, it's hard for me – to to get too down on myself i just continue to do the analysis and believe in myself in that regard but what i want to tell you guys is right here if you're struggling watch the ufc videos if you're struggling watch you this is what we do all off season long shout out to the mvps and 10 and 2 10 and 2 4 and 0 on the locks we went ham last night on ufc people made Shout out to them. This is what I have all the MVPs for in the offseason. All you football MVPs, you guys don't understand. You guys don't know what's going on. F that. I want to bet on the NFL. Let me know the next time you go 10-2 and two in the NFL. Just let me know. Your friends don't know, but Rico knows. Hopefully, we knock it out the park next week, guys. I'll get after it. Peace.